Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to talk about the new basic panel settings in the develop module in the Lightroom 4 beta. Now it took me a little bit of time to get used to these but it's very powerful. I'm going to start as usual with the white balance. I'm going to warm it up a little bit and then I'm going to come down to the tone section. Now the idea here is to work from top to bottom. So I'm going to start with exposure and unlike with Lightroom 2 and Lightroom 3 I'm not going to set exposure for the brightest tones in the image. I used to say how bright do I want the brightest tones and I would focus on that as I slid this slider. But with Lightroom 4 I'm going to focus on the midtones with exposure. So I'm just looking at on average how bright is the photo. That's what's guiding my eye as I'm doing this. I'm not paying any attention to whether I'm blowing out highlights. In this particular photo I'm not. I didn't clip anything. But I'm not paying any attention to that in this photo. Next I'm going to come down to contrast. Contrast lightens the light tones, darkens the dark tones to add some punchiness to the photo. I tend to like a little bit more contrast so I'm going to go ahead and increase it. Now sometimes when I add contrast because it lightens the lights I need to come back up to exposure and reduce it a little bit. It looks okay in this case. Next I'm going to go down to highlights and shadows. So if I feel like my highlights got too bright or if I blew out any highlights when I increased exposure I would reduce highlights. So maybe I'll just dampen that down just a little bit because it did get a little too bright in here. In this case I'm going to go ahead and brighten the shadows. The hair on this snowman is kind of like a black blob. It's not completely blocked up but I don't see enough detail. So I'm going to add light into the shadows by sliding the shadows to the right. Notice how effectively it isolates the shadows. It works better than fill light in Lightroom 2 and Lightroom 3. So I'll just add some detail into there. And then with this photo I'm done. I really don't need to go to whites and blacks and I don't go there nearly as often as I used to. Whites is the white point, blacks is the black point. How dark the darkest, the absolute darkest tones in the image are or the brightest tones. In this case I already have very bright tones and very dark tones in the photo. I've achieved everything I needed to with highlights and shadows together with exposure and contrast. Next I would simply come down to clarity. Clarity is the same slider as before but it works a little bit differently. It's more effective at giving the photo some three-dimensionality without creating weird shadows and I'll show you those shadows in another example. And Now if I hit the backslash key you can see my before and my after. So it didn't take a lot of sliders to adjust this photo. Next I'm going to work this photo. I show this photo in a Lightroom 3 blog post where I'm talking about the importance of mastering the basics panel. But you're seeing right now the work that I've done on this photo in Lightroom 3. If I go back in history you'll see what it looked like before I started. Very much underexposed. In fact this was one shot of many that I planned to blend together with HDR to get a good exposure everywhere. But I wanted to show that you could, you could work it pretty effectively just using the basics panel. So this is the before and this is the after using Lightroom 3. What I didn't point out is if I zoom in on these trees here there is this odd halo along the trees. That's caused by too much fill light. If I back off on the fill light you'll see that I go back to having normal trees. Lightroom 3 fill light and also recovery could create some odd halos sometimes if you push them really far. Now let's do this with Lightroom 4 instead. I'm going to update this to the current process version or 2012. I could scroll down on the right but I can click on the exclamation point and say update. And I'm going to go ahead and reset it. Collapse the panel, zoom back out and we'll work it with the Lightroom 4 controls. Again with exposure I'm looking at the midtones. So I'm just looking at on average how does the photo look. Notice how I've blown out the highlights, blew out the sky. I'll get to that though. I'm going to go ahead and increase the contrast a little bit here. Now to recover the blown highlights and, and darken that sky I'm going to take the highlight slider and go to the left. In this case I'm going to go all the way. Now the sky is still a little bit bright. You can see that there are some blown out highlights. If I want to continue to darken the sky or to get these whites, the brightest tones, to not be quite so bright then I'd come down to the white slider and back off on that. But I would do highlights before whites. Now I'll work on the shadows. I want to bring some light into the side of this piece of furniture so I'm going to increase the shadows. Now that makes the image a little bit flat so I'm going to go ahead and increase the contrast a little bit more. 
it's also brightened the whole image a little bit much, so I'll go ahead and reduce exposure. So there is some interplay, some back and forth. Generally you're going to go top down. Occasionally something you do down here may cause you to need to do a little fine tuning up above. Now the black point, how dark the darkest tones are, I really don't need to move. There's nothing blocked up here. There's nothing that's pure black. And I don't need to brighten up these shadow areas anymore. If the shadow areas were still too dark, then I would come to blacks and I would start bumping that up as well. But in this case I don't need to. Now that I've got this as I like it, let me zoom in on the trees here and notice that there are no odd halos. So this new functionality is not only more powerful, but it doesn't introduce those, those odd artifacts. What you're seeing here is noise from the photo being so underexposed. You'd have that no matter which version of Lightroom you use, until you use noise reduction. So that's the Lightroom 4 version. I probably would also warm this up a bit, and I'd go with that. Let's take a look at another photo. Now this is an extreme photo in that there are very bright tones and not much else. But I do develop this in a video on my Lightroom Fundamentals and Beyond DVD, and you can also watch the video for free on my blog, but I use Lightroom 3. So for Lightroom 4, again I'm looking at the midtones as I slide exposure. Everything's too bright, so I'm going to re reduce the exposure. Everything's very flat, so I'm going to increase contrast. Because all the tones, most of the tones are bright, it tended to make the whole image too bright, so I'll back off on exposure a little bit. I'm not sure how much yet. I'll come down to highlights and shadows. The brightest tones in the image can be a bit brighter, so I'll increase highlights. And the shadows can definitely be darker. I need to get some more contrast in this photo. So I'll bring contrast down. Now even with shadows all the way at negative 100, and with a reduction in exposure, and with contrast, the darkest tones in my photo are not very dark, so I still want to darken those darkest tones. So this is where I need to go down to blacks. Slide blacks to the left to darken. Now this gets a little heavy here, so what I'm going to do, I could back off on that, but that leaves it kind of flat. So I want to keep that overall contrast and just fill in these shadows a little bit. So I'll come back up the shadows and just add a little bit more light into there. Next I would go ahead and come down to clarity, punch it up a little bit more, maybe add some color with vibrance and saturation just as I would do before. Now right now the whole thing feels a little too bright, so I would go back up to exposure and bring that down a little bit, just to change the mood a bit. Now the whole thing felt too bright, so I went to exposure. If just the brightest tones or just the darkest tones had felt too bright, I would have gone to highlights and shadows. Let's look at one more, just so that I can talk a bit about clarity here. I use this example in my Lightroom 3 DVD for many reasons. But one of the things I point out is the effect of too much clarity. So to show you that, I'm going to go back to the Lightroom 3 version, so the process version, I'm changing it back to 2010, and I'm going to come increase clarity to 100. Now I always point out to students that you get a very, you get a heavy shadow here, so let me go back to before, and then after. See how you get this dark shadow along the edge you also get kind of a bright halo along the bright edge. It's a little bit harder to see, but that's before and that's after. Now if instead I upgrade this to the Lightroom 4 version and I go with positive clarity, that's no clarity and that's at 100. So it's making things more three-dimensional, but you're not seeing nearly as much of those heavy shadows along edges that you could sometimes see with the Lightroom 3 version does a much better job. I'm going to go to the main photo that I used in my blog post on the importance of mastering the basics panel to get stunning photos. I think I titled it the most important thing you can do to get stunning photos in Lightroom and it was all about mastering the basics panel. So I worked through this photo in detail on my blog in Lightroom 3. So we'll do the Lightroom 4 version. Now I noticed that the horizon here is bowing. That's because of my lens. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here to the Lens Corrections panel, click on Enable Profile Corrections. So there's a profile built in that knows that my lens has that issue and fixes it. That's not new in Lightroom 4. Okay, so we fixed that. I'm going to start by warming this up a touch, and then I'm going to look at the midtones. It's a little bright for what I'm going for here, so I'll darken it. Add some contrast to make it more punchy. 
So it brightens the bright tones, darkens the dark tones. That already did a ton. I don't really need to do too much more. Maybe I can brighten the bright tones a little bit more. At least try it. Sometimes I need to actually slide the slider to see whether I like what it's going to do. And I'll darken the shadows just a little bit more. It's going to darken that foreground down a little bit. With this I'm done with the tone section. I don't feel that the darkest tones need to be any darker than they are, or that the brightest tones need to be any brighter. It's pretty punchy. I'm satisfied with that. I'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit and add some clarity. And in this case, clarity really brings out that texture in the sand. I like that. Because it's adding contrast to edges, it can again start to make things feel a little too bright. So I may come back up to exposure and just bring that down just a touch more. Then I can experiment with vibrance and saturation to see if I like more color in it. So here's the before and here's the after. Now the last one I want to show you is just to show you how much improved highlight recovery is over Lightroom 3. With these controls we've gained maybe up to a stop of additional information. That's a lot of additional information. So here's a photo I used to use in class because it has blown out highlights. And if you look at the histogram, if you know how to read it, you can see that at the moment it doesn't have blown out highlights. But I'm again going to go back to the 2010 process version here, to how it used to be. And notice as I hover over this, that the shoulder's all blown out. Now I used to teach that you would use in Lightroom 3, that you'd use the recovery slider to get those highlights back. But you'd still end up with areas with no detail, even though they technically were not blown out after using the recovery slider. So let's go ahead and update this to Lightroom 4. And I'll go ahead and reset the sliders. Notice how the highlights are no longer blown out. Lightroom 4 does a much better job at automatic highlight recovery. So I can't use this as an example in class anymore for a photo that has blown out highlights. I can further dampen the highlights by sliding the highlight slider to the left, and you can see that I really truly do have detail in here. Now you've seen me go back and forth from the 2010 process version for Lightroom 3 and 2012 for Lightroom 4. I should mention that if you don't get comfortable with these sliders, you really don't like these sliders, but you like other things about the Lightroom 4 beta, you can in fact continue to work with the old sliders. So again, you would simply come down to the end here, click on the 2010 process version, and you will have the old versions of the sliders available. As a result of that, there will be other functionality that you won't have available. For example, I, mean, I haven't covered it yet, but in the adjustment brush, you won't, have exam you won't have access to all of the new features in there. But it is an option. If you want to update photos that you worked on in 2010, let me go ahead and do a little bit of work on this photo. I'll just uh, do some, some random work here. If you want to update your photos, you can click on the exclamation point, and it, with the dialog here, you can choose to update this individual photo or update all film strip photos. Now, if we back up a little bit to when we went from Lightroom 2 to Lightroom 3, I told most people to just update everything. There was a little bit of improvement in sharpening and noise reduction, but otherwise no visible effect to your photos. Going from 2010 to 2012, or in other words Lightroom 3 to the Lightroom 4 beta, there's a huge change and the translation from old to new is not always very good. When I choose update here, you're going to see a change to the photo as it tries to translate the Lightroom 3 settings into Lightroom 4 settings. So I'll click on update. And in this case, I saw just a little bit of difference. The shadows got a little deeper, not very much, but sometimes there's a really big difference. So I don't recommend updating all your photos at once. Just update them one at a time as needed. So this concludes the video on the basics panel.